And as Neil says, you know, we're based in Huddersfield, a small local firm, but I've lived in Halifax for many years now. Um, and I was absolutely delighted uh, to be commissioned to help restore this building. Um, it's been a long sort of standing passion of mine to take old and historic buildings such as this and, and breathe new life into them. Um, but particularly in this case, as you know, there's a bit of history there, I've uh, probably like many of you. I've spent a bit too much time and a bit too much money uh, down in the puzzle. Um, so I thought it was about time that I got <laughs> recouped a bit of a bit of that back. <laughs> but um, it's been a real, real pleasure to, to get involved and, and you know to get involved in a, in a community project as this. These these don't come along all that often, so um, it's, it's been really nice. Um, so what I'd like to uh, discuss tonight really is. Uh, now Sam's been through quite a bit of this, but I'm guessing that since the pub's been closed for uh, you know quite a long time now, uh, and maybe some of you guys haven't been down there for, for quite some time, just to, just to walk you through back through the building as we as we have it now, um, or in terms of you know, the sp I'll talk a little bit about the brief that I was given. Um, and then how I've interpreted that brief. Uh, to come uh, along with the proposed design that I will then present. Um, I'll then talk a little bit more about uh, the continuation of the design process uh, through to tendering and the build and hopefully up to handover and opening. <clears throat> so the existing building, um, I'll keep this brief um, but I think most of you remember the sort of site layout, you know, you, you come on Hollins Lane, down the, the cobbled uh, little lane to the main entrance, uh, main group of buildings, and then a side extension housing the, the cellars. Um, <coughs> so you've got your main entrance here into the space here, which the use as the performance area, through a, a small <coughs> gap uh, into the snow and the bar, small kitchen. Toilet area and stairs up to first floor apartment. First floor, <coughs> some of you may not be familiar with, with this, but a uh, fairly sort of standard arrangement. Stairs up, bathroom, bedroom, living space, and a kitchen at the back. Um, a further floor up, um, we have the brewing tower, uh, which is currently you know not. A bit underused, um, mm. poor access up to there. Um, so again, there was some suggestion that we will we'll, we'll try and explore how we can make better use of that space. Um, South space, a um, little bit pokey, but you know, we've, we've got some ideas on how we can uh, sort of improve that. Uh, and then the the elevations as as they stand. So from from Sam's presentation, you can see that a lot you know has, has changed already. There's been some great work in sort of stripping it back to the point where we can then you know take it forward and and, uh, um, and push forward with the with the full refurbishment. <clears throat> so the brief that I was given back in the spring of this year uh, included the the full refurbishment of the building. <clears throat> now. Um, that would entail um, such things as essential repairs, as you can see from the photographs, the roof is shot, there's a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of timber that is, is completely rotted through, um, the, the stripping of, of the roof has meant that there's been a lot of water <coughs> penetration, so plaster work is, is, is shot, um, it's exposed quite a number of structural cracks which need, need dealing with. And things like the, the, the windows, electrics, heating, fixture fitting. So, from, from the very start, there's, there's an awful lot of essential repairs to do. Um, beyond that, then, I was asked to explore the possibility of extending the building. Now, um, it wasn't necessarily specified exactly what that extension, what function that extension might perform. Um, there's been suggestion about, you know, 
better toilet facilities, more performance space, seating space, community space. Uh, I'll come on to talk, uh, to talk through about um, how I interpreted that particular part of the brief shortly. <clears throat> Uh, creation of a large bar area, um, it's always been an issue, um, the space behind the bar and also in front of the bar, um, you know, I understand from people who work behind the bar, it's not a particularly pleasant working environment, everyone's on top of each other, um, so I was asked to, to, to look into that. Um, the removal of the existing staircase from the bar area, the one that led up to the first floor apartment, that is a big, you know, that's, that's always been a big problem and you know, I think that was high upon on everybody's agenda. So you know, talking through how, how we've uh, looked at you know, alleviating that, that issue. Uh, extended improved access to the cellar. Um, again, you know, this, is, this has been you know, a particular issue. Um, you know, it, it's been difficult getting through. There's, there's currently a hatch underneath the stairs to the, to the flat above. Just lower yourself down. It's not. It's not ideal. Other than that, it's a, it's a long walk around the building to to get in from, from the lower side externally. Um, improved disabled access um, can sometimes be a challenge in an old building like this. But nonetheless, I think uh, wow, we've got this opportunity to uh, you know to, to to look at this building again. You know, we, we need to try and improve you know access and disabled access wherever possible. Uh, and then some of the costs um, add an additional floor within the brewed tower, which I'll, which I'll come on to, uh, to speak about. <clears throat> so, um, my response to this brief then, um, I mean, I did a lot of talking through with the committee, um, you know, with, with uh, people in the wider community, and, and also sort of drew upon my own sort of personal experience of the pub. <clears throat> Um, it's clear that there's a lot of um, um, there's a lot of affection for, for the puzzle, um, but again, I think everybody can you know understand that there are issues with it that could perhaps spoil your enjoyment of the building. Um, now, the quickest and cheapest way of getting this building back up and running would be to carry out those essential repairs, throw all the paint at it, and open the doors again. But I think we've got a unique opportunity here. Um, you know, there's a lot of goodwill, a lot of support, and a good, you know, a reasonable budget as well. And I think we won't be addressing a lot of these issues if we if we took if we took that easy option. So I think it's it's you know it's, it's imperative that we explore you know all the options available to now available to us now to get this building back up and running, but also working better than ever. So. Amongst those voices, a lot of strong opinion um, about what we should do to this building. Um, and your view might depend on you know, how you have used the building in the past or how you might use it in the future. So for example, bar staff will have particularly strong views about how we deal with the bar area and servicing the bar and access to the cellars. Um, you know, a music lover would be more interested in the visibility and uh, audibility of the performers. Uh, and other people might take the view that you know, they, want, they want the sort of quieter, you know, cosy spaces uh, away from performers, performances um, preserved. So I see it as my job to kind of steer a course through all these very different, differing opinions. And hopefully you know, what we present tonight you know, answers you know, a, lot, a lot of those questions. Um, <coughs> So overriding that though as well is, is this idea that there is this there is this fondness for the building and what I didn't want to do was just to take a wrecking ball to it. Um, you know, we, we want it to be recognisable as the puzzle. You know, we want it to walk in there and, and this, get the same you know sense of space and the same feeling that, that you always had in the past, but with some of these frustrations I doubt. So again, I think you know, we've got to a point now where we, we, we've, we've, we've done that, hopefully. Um, so, we've gone through a number of different iterations. I think we're up to sort of number nine of the concept plan now. Um, so we've explored a lot of different, um, different scenarios, um, taking it down sort of, you know, 
down at dead ends and not come back around. And I think we've got to a point now where we can present to you a scheme that we think deals with, you know, all, if not all, but most of these, these issues. Uh, it's still conceptual, um, you know, it's still kind of broad brush. Um, I won't be talking about floor finishes or, you know, what colour the walls are going to be painted. It's very much, you know, the spaces that we're creating, the arrangement, the flow, um, and then the plenty of time to talk about, you know, the finer detail uh, in, in due course. <clears throat> Okay, so we want to. Um, oh, sorry, there's a little bit there. Before we jam there, come on, start this. Right. <clears throat> so hopefully, most a lot of you have a chance just to have a look at the the plans that are up on the wall and on your on your tables. Uh, so you hopefully you're slightly familiar with, with this now. But what I'd like to do is just talk you through it in more detail and kind of how we've come to you know the decisions that we've that we've come to. So, <clears throat> first of all, entrance area, not really changed from the original, other than the fact that we've got an opportunity to um, bring the external ground levels up uh, to correspond with the internal floor finish, creating a level access, which is going to be a lot easier for you know, disabled and wheelchair access. Um, so the, the doorway which that we've got leading into the building, there's not a lot we can do with them without, you know, without getting taking the wrecking ball to it and changing, and changing the, the sort of the feel of the building. So the, the view's been taken that we can we can work with the you know the, the main engine stores as we've got, but we can we can we can provide a level threshold which will give you clear and easy access into this you know exis, existing space here, which which largely stays as it is. Um, there is an existing fireplace in here, which the feeling was that it, it, it sort of cut off, it, it sort of narrowed down that little area there. It, it was never used in the fireplace, but people used to stand on it to get a better view of the band. Uh, I, I think it's more valuable uh, to create a wider sort of access point there, plus also some, some additional seating in here. Um, we can always replace, you know, open fires, you know, somewhere else that might be a bit more sort of practical. Um, so coming into this space largely remains unchanged. I'll come on to this in due course. Now the big issue I think everybody felt with the with the puzzle was the the flow and the access to the building. You know, if you were you know, busy band night or something was going on outside, you know, to get from the outside through, you know, the crowd, through to the bar to get served, through to the, to the toilets, absolute nightmare. And I think one of the big culprits of that was the staircase dropping right in the middle of the building. So, very quickly, you know, we established that that was, you know, um, you know uh, something that we, that we had to do. So, we're going to get rid of the staircase leading up to the first floor flat. And we're going to replace it with a staircase which runs externally from this backyard area over the top of the toilet block and into the uh, first floor apartment in the kitchen. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you the first floor area shortly. So what, here, what that does is it's an opportunity to, to, to open up the wall in part to give better flow, not, not just sort of physical flow, but also I think there's a sense as well, and I've heard it a lot tonight as well, that you know, it's, it's lovely in this snug area. You know, when the fire was going and you know, the, 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 you, know you, you got installed there, it was nice, but if you, if you happen to be out here, it, it, could, it could be a little quiet, you know, you could feel a little bit apart from what was going on in, in this snug area. So I think what this does as well, it just sort of brings some of that atmosphere through and, and you know, if you were sat in there, you're perhaps not you know, you don't feel quite so, you know, on your own, really. So the idea was to open this up. Now, again, there's been quite a lot of discussion about this little, little proposal, in that a lot of people, you know, do like that sort of cosy, cosy space and want that preserved. And I think, you know, that can still happen. Um, rather than, you know, you know, widening that out fully, we can perhaps install some sort of, 
you know, screen or half height wall or something that still gives that sense of separation, you know, division between two spaces and, and, and keeps that kind of quieter, cosier space in there, particularly when you know, performances are happening in here. Um, but yet, you know, you, you still got views through, you know, you've, you've still got better flow through. Um, so that's the, that's the sort of rationale behind, behind that area there. Um, the snug remains pretty much as it always has done. Um, however, the, the bar, again, one of the big concerns with the bar was that it was, it was very tight to work behind. Um, we've looked at ways of trying to kind of uh, lengthen you know, bar area just to sort of be able to get you know, more elbows on the bar. That, that's proved quite difficult without a wholesale move of the bar. Um, I did play about with some ideas, uh, you know, moving the bar wholesale, but I think there was a sense that we were just sort of moving a little bit too far away from, from the puzzle as we all know and love it. So that's why you know, we've kind of left the bar where it is. But the idea is, is that a lot of the kind of um, you know the genre work behind the bar is, is just cleared out. So you've got a much deeper bar. Staff can work in there a, a, a lot easier without fear of just you know, sort of falling into each other. Uh, and we can also provide access to the bar through a, a gold door opening through the kitchen and, and into the bar through the side. <coughs> So we feel that, that that way we've got a better, so more serviceable bar area, a clearer you know, area outside of the bar for people to come and go and, and, and flow there. Um, then moving through to the back area, the proposal is to flatten the existing toilet block wholesale. Um, the existing building runs the full length of this boundary wall here and returns around and there's a very, you know, a peculiar sort of gimmel uh, underused space here. The, 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 play, the building's shot really, it's, it's, it's absolutely knackered. So I think rather than trying to work with it, we've taken a decision that we will we'll drop that and we'll replace it with something uh, a, lot more, a lot more practical. So what we do is we, well, it's fairly simply really, is, is, is Put a, put a new wall at the back, new flat roof over, and then we refit this toilet area wholesale. Now, the current thinking is, we, and again we've played about with various layouts for this toilet area, um, traditional male-female toilet arrangements, but I think the, the, the consensus is, is that a, a disabled toilet with some unisex cubicles and a separate sort of urinal space would be the best way to service the pub. Um, I think it's becoming more prevalent these days in, in, in modern pubs um, to move away from the traditional male-female arrangement. And therefore, you know, e each cubicle can be used by, by anybody and you know, it, it sort of speeds up the turnaround of, of, of usage of the toilets. So that's the idea, that's the idea there. Um, the kitchen area, um, again, nothing, nothing massively changing in here, other than the fact that the idea is to throw it open to community use. So again, when we've got roots in here, um, you know, we can we can offer some small scale cooking facilities. I'm not talking about you know preparing big meals, but the reheating of food. You know, if it's like a curry night or something like that, or yeah. Your heated pine peas or something like that. There's an oven there. There's a hob. You know, there's some storage space, cupboard, etc. Uh, and we feel that that will, you know, that 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 will be attractive to you know sort of community group use as, as, as well as you know kind of providing you know services to the you know publicans. Um, so then I will now move on to this space size. Um, the idea is that we can get this, the main part of the building, up and running without too much trouble. Um, you know, once we've got serviceable toilets, the bar area working, you know, everything fitted out, that, that pub standard stands alone and works. However, we've got an opportunity here to, you know, create more space and more flexible space. So, 
the side here, currently we've got a sort of ramshackle building which is used as, 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 the, as a cellar, as an extension to the cellar. And the idea is that we replace that with a slightly larger side extension. Um, and that will provide additional seating space, firstly, um, flexible performance space, and you know, that sort of community room space. So it gives a bit of flexibility when it comes to you know, putting on functions and performances. Just from this little example here, I've shown you know, kind of band set up here as it always was. Um, and that's kind of a good arrangement for you know, people can view performance from, from this area here, but also from this area here. Now, just as easily, performance could be positioned here, uh, and seating area here, and this would then leave the snug and this area free for people to, to use who perhaps don't want to watch the performance. Um, so it, it just offers a lot more flexibility. Um, so the idea would be that we knock through uh, these, these side walls to provide you know, access through. And this, I feel, would be quite a nice uh, space, um, slightly different to the, to the feel, the look and feel of the rest of the puzzle. I mean, the snug and, and, and this seating area you know, hasn't got the benefit of a lot of windows. It's quite dark, quite cosy. Coming through to here could be a different feeling space different feeling space and light. Um, there's an opportunity to get quite a bit of window, window space in here. It's elevated above the courtyard below, so you know, if there are performances going on outside, you know, you could have people seated up here, you know, taking advantage of the performances outside. Your windows could be thrown open and, and you know, it, it, a lot lighter, a lot more airy than, 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 the, than the space that we've got currently in the, in the puzzle. Um, so that was the idea there. Um, just quickly, in the back here, the removal of the toilet block allows some yard space uh, and a better, uh, uh, better functioning access up to the road area. The road level is higher than the pub, so we need a few steps up to the road level. Um, that will give us an opportunity to get some bins, storage in there, um, with direct access from the bar. But then from that from that level there, with it up and across the flat roof to the to the, uh, to the flat, so that means that you know the, the access to the flat is a lot more private. It's a lot safer. You know the the, the, the issues of kind of you know escaping through a busy pub if there was a fire upstairs. You know don't bear thinking about really. Um, so you've got private access to the, to the first floor there. So the first floor plan really doesn't change too much. Um, obviously we've got the staircase removed from there, the place with this one coming over the flat roof, and the main access will be through this existing door here, into the existing kitchen space, through to the living room, through to the lobby, into a bathroom and a bedroom. So fairly simple, just a, a pretty much a refurbishment of what we've what we've got there now. Second floor, so the room tower. Um, obviously, it was part of the roof to explore, you know, getting up there. Now, the issue that we found here is, is that it's quite high. The level difference between the kitchen and this second floor area uh, is such that the number of steps that you need to get up there would mean quite a big staircase. Um, and then, you know, it's where you position the staircase. It probably take up half of the space already. So it's come down to a simple equation really of cost versus um, you know, what, what usable space it ends up giving you really. So I think you know after we've explored that I think the decision's been made that really it doesn't provide us with enough of a benefit um, to justify the costs. Um, so it's, it's a bit of a shame because it's, it's quite nice when you're up there, you know you're obviously quite elevated, there's a, there's a couple of windows or three windows up there. Um, but I think what we'll, what we'll try and do is we'll try and get a more of a sort of loft ladder, fix, a fixed ladder, but more of a steep sort of loft ladder type thing, so that it can be used, you know, occasional use of storage or something like that. Um, so a little bit of a shame that we haven't been able to do much with that, but I think, you know, kind of, kind of hands are tied with, with that a little bit. Um, the cellar plan. So what we've got here is the existing cellar. 
which again remains largely unchanged. Uh, but then underneath this proposed new extension, uh, we've got an opportunity to get quite a nice amount of, of beer storage. Um, it will be sunk down to the same level as the existing cellar, so we'll be able to get some better access between the two spaces. But also, it gives us enough space as well to provide some additional toilet space, which is accessible via half a dozen steps from the courtyard area. Um, something that I feel is sort of particularly useful for external events, rather than having to sort of trail all the way through the pub to the toilets. You know, you've got a couple of toilets there ready for use, and then if you've got you know a temporary bar set up outside, then you know it, you could you could conceivably not have to go go inside, you know, to enjoy whatever's going on outside. <coughs> So, the other missions. Um, so again, other than um, essential repairs, not much change. Um, the view from the road will remain largely the same. Um, there's discussions about whether we keep or remove existing chimneys. I think you can picture it, but this quite a group of ugly looking chimneys uh, to the side there uh, and you know there is a there is a discussion as to whether we can replace that with a simple flue uh, and, and just you know give give focus back to the main the main parts of the building again. Um, the changes to the toilet area and the, and the yard at the back again it's pretty much hidden behind the boundary wall so there's not much you know changing in, in visual appearance from the roadside either. The main thing that will change obviously is this side extension. Now again, this form that I've shown here uh, is not necessarily the final form. Uh, I think what was important in this exercise was to, to get the layout working. Um, and this, this form has come about from the fact that we've got a window at first floor, which is a window into the kitchen at the first floor apartment, uh, which is at a level which dictates really that the, that the roof has to be flat. If we keep that window, then really the, the, roof, the roof needs to be flat, which then leads, leads you further on to thinking, well, you know, a flat, a flat roof extension, you know, a lot of people, you know, don't particularly like um, you know, rather reminiscent of you know some dodgy you know 80s you know kitchen extension architecture, um, which we wanted to try and avoid. So the the logical conclusion was perhaps to go down the more contemporary route. Um, the the idea really is that the puzzle is such a hodgepodge of different parts of the building, different styles, different eras. Uh, each time it was changed, it was changed in accordance with whatever the style was at the time, whatever materials people had to hand at the time. And the philosophy here is, is that, well, why, why change that now? Um, so, you know, it's, it's a modern extension, let's, let's make, it, make it modern. Um, it's set back enough, sometimes, sometimes 2D graphics like this don't give it justice, but it's set back enough from the main building uh, for it to be, uh, you know, subservient to the main building. So the idea is, is that the view, you'd still see the main part of the building first, the brew, brewing tower, uh, and then this is very much set back. Material choices could be to match or could be something to contrast perhaps, uh, but try and keep the building, the material a little softer you know, use of glazing to make parts of the building make more see-through so that it's not one lump of a, of a block of an extension. So just try to break it up somewhat so that, it, so that it's got this subservience to the original building. So that's the idea there. And already through discussions with various people tonight, you know, that, that raises, you know, some, some people don't like that, that style of architecture, you know, others do. And, Again, I think it's that kind of thing that we welcome your feedback on, really. Um, you know, your, your, your thoughts on on that. And with the toilets and the uh, and the cellars below, uh, this is a cut through the, the the toilet areas at the back. 
stairs up onto the flat roof and into the uh, into the apartment. <clears throat> so that's the design uh, in a nutshell. Obviously, I'll come back to any any questions that you might have on the layout, um, you know, in, in the Q and A afterwards. We'll just briefly talk you through the uh, the process now. Um, obviously. We're at a, a fairly advanced stage of the design process. Um, nonetheless, we still are taking comments and we'll still look to try and incorporate as many you know, good ideas into this scheme as we possibly can. We've had the scheme uh, costed by a quantity surveyor uh, and that's uh, found uh, it to be uh, affordable. Uh, again, there's a big caveat on this. It's, it's very conceptual at this moment. Um, you know, so things are likely to change financially as well. Um, but we're, we're, we're really reasonably confident that what we've drawn here, what we're proposing here, is, is doable. Um, so the steps from here on in really, uh, we're looking to try and move this forward as quickly as we possibly can. Um, so really from, from mid-September onwards, uh, we're looking to complete this conceptual design stage uh, to a point where we've got a, a final design freeze. Something that I can take to the local authority planning department to have some pre-planning application discussions with. Um, I'd like to gauge their, um, gauge their reaction to it. Um, I'm not expecting um, uh, too much, um, you know, a kickback from from them. I think most of the proposals are relatively straightforward and uncontroversial uh, for them not to want to get too involved in it. But I'd just like to to gauge that reaction, um, which will then allow us later on in September, hopefully, to start the submission process. Um, uh, start a full plan application process. At the same time. Um, just to try and keep the momentum going, uh, look to complete the detailed designs. So that's me providing more technical drawings, technical specifications that we can then, um, you know, first of all, submit for a building regulations application and then ultimately pull together to provide a, a, a tender package uh, to send out to local uh, builders and contractors. Um, just probably worth mentioning that on the tender process that with the scheme that we're presenting now, there are there is an opportunity to um, pull forward a fair bit of the work. So, for example, where um, you know where we're not um, proposing to 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 impact on the roof, for example, we can start the roof works. Some of the windows that need replacing, where proposals don't affect those, we can start to put windows in. So we can start to move forward towards getting this place watertight before the really, you know, the bad, bad weather really sort of sets in. So notwithstanding, you know, this sort of formal tender process of the overall works, what we'll try and do is just look to package off little areas of work that can be can be got on with now, um, and you know, start drawing down a bit of money, start you know, start start getting the place watertight. Um, so the hope is October, tender the works, and then later in October review those tenders and select a contractor. Uh, depending on their particular sort of leading time, then straight into construction phase. Um, again, it's, um, it's a little difficult to determine exactly the length of the construction phase. There's a lot of goodwill out there already. We've got a lot of, you know, um, hands-on people down there, um, and I imagine they'll, you know, they'll be that goodwill continuing. Um, a lot of labouring going on, um, which hopefully can can just just keep things moving uh, in, in construction phase. So hopefully, November, December, you know, if we hit it hard, then you know we can get to a point where we could be handing over. Uh, Following handover, then we're into a period of fit out and decoration. So that doesn't necessarily mean that you know we kind of open the doors for Christmas. Um, but I'd like to think that we can be kind of you know on, on the way towards it. Um, and you know you never know if we do get a real push on, 
it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's possible, it's possible. We don't have to be building the, the side extension for the pub to be operational. We simply need the toilets, the bar, seating areas, uh, the place to be safe, you know, to, to get it operational. Um, so, um, watch, watch this space, really. Um, yeah, so thanks very much for listening. I've no doubt that you've got um, you know, quite a few, few questions. So, um, is, are we straight into Q&A now? Um, we are, Chris, yes. Are we? Okay. It's uh, very comprehensive and uh, very well presented afterwards. Uh, so, well